In addition to counseling, very frequently, in fact, in the majority of the cases, unless your, your counseling has given them enough reassurance that they feel this is no longer a problem, then sound therapy or sound enrichment or sound stimulation becomes very important. So when we talk about tinnitus rehabilitation or tinnitus management, as you can see from this slide, we're talking about a combination of sound therapy and counseling, and our objective is to produce or facilitate habituation, the natural ability of our brains to become accustomed to something so that we're taking a situation and instead of it being in the foreground of our consciousness, moving it into the background of our consciousness where a non-threatening or non-important stimuli belongs. So the role of sound therapy that we're going to talk about would be this. First of all, we want to provide some kind of sound to induce or to make the habituation to the tinnitus a little bit easier. I want to show you just a little graphic here that indicates why masking is really not the best way to go. If we look at this particular slide, we can look at this box in, your, in the corner here that shows a, a word, the word tinnitus. And let's think of this big green word as being the loudness of the original quality of the tinnitus signal. If we mask it, and we put in a background noise that is loud enough that we actually change the quality of tinnitus, even either by making it very soft because the outside noise is much louder, or by making the tinnitus not even audible, we've changed the quality of the signal in a manner that your brain can't habituate to something that it doesn't experience. So really the preferred way of going that we now know after many, many years of, of, of research by a number of wonderful researchers is that what we would like to do is change the background in the brain, not the external background, but the background in the brain, and I've denoted this on this slide with a different color, we've, we've made our brain green here, but you'll notice that you don't see the word tinnitus as readily as you did in the first picture, in the original picture, even though that word tinnitus is just as large and happens to be exactly the same color as it was in the original frame, we don't detect it now because we've changed our internal background. So that's what we're going to use our sound therapy for. So the terminology we'll just become acquainted with as we talk is masking, meaning covering up the tinnitus with a louder signal, partial masking, meaning bringing down the loudness of the tinnitus because that external signal mingles with it or, or, or changes the quality of it. Mixing or mingling, which is probably going to be our ideal situation so that the brain is receiving both the perception of the tinnitus and the perception of this external stimulation. And then, of course, we're going to focus our attention on the use of music, whether it's unfiltered or filtered music, and specifically on the use of fractal tones or the Zen um, programs that are in the White X hearing aids. So there's a number of current sound treatments, noise generators, maskers, music, hearing aids, which, as you could see on the screen, really just putting the hearing aids on is effective in over 60% of cases. There's also combination instruments, which in essence is where we could probably classify our wide X instruments using the Zen because the combination instruments have both amplification and the presence of additional stimuli to mingle with the tinnitus. Of course, some of our clients are going to use home-based sounds, a fan, a, a noise, a sound generator that makes ocean waves or the sounds of the sea or something like that. And there are some commercially available uh, compact discs that help a patient in terms of relaxation or in terms of partial masking or even mingling with their tinnitus. So, and I, uh, one other point I should make here on this, uh, on these sounds, many of the combination units that have been uh, uh, out there even before Widex produced the Zen um, fractal tones used a broadband noise generator because number one it's very easy to put into a hearing aid and 
the, and the fact is, is that that broadband noise does, to some extent, reduce the contrast of the tinnitus to silence. And that's an important thing with any sound stimuli. If you're in a completely silent situation, the presence of your tinnitus is really going to stand out. It, it's kind of like walking into a room with a, a candle, and if that's the only light in the room, your eyes will go right to that candle. If, on the other hand, there's the lights in the room are bright, then your eyes will go wherever you decide they should go. So using a noise can reduce the contrast of tinnitus to silence, but the problem is, is that a noise may have a more short-term rather than a long-term effect, which is what we're trying to gain, and that that noise may have more of a peripheral effect on the ears than it does on the brain, which is ultimately where we want to make this change. One of the other things about noise is that noise may require a longer period of time to help a person habituate because it's changing the quality of the original tinnitus and once you remove the noise the original tinnitus is still going to be there so that may alter how habituation occurs in a natural manner and the other aspect of noise that in my opinion and, I, and based on our research we believe is an advantage for the fractal tones is that Noise doesn't induce relaxation or reduce stress, and that's going to become very important for our patients. So we're going to use some kind of sound stimulation to interfere with the way the brain reacts to different activity. We're going to want to try to make the tinnitus more difficult for the brain to detect, and we're hoping that by putting external sound through a hearing aid, into the brain that it allows the brain to turn down its sensitivity to not try to overcompensate for the sounds that it's missing because of the peripheral hearing loss. Our goals in using sound really, you could look at it in a few ways. You could look at it from the perspective of active listening so that we try to distract a person from listening to their tinnitus, but that doesn't have a good long-term effect. You could use as a goal, masking of the tinnitus so that the person doesn't hear the tinnitus, but that too doesn't have a long-term effect. What we want to achieve is habituation or desensitization to the tinnitus, and the best way to achieve that goal is through passive listening. You sh the patient or our clients should not have to actively engage in listening to a stimulus in order to learn to habituate to their tinnitus any more than you need to actively engage to not feel your ring on your finger or your wristwatch on your hand. You don't have to think about it to do it. In fact, if you do think about it, it sometimes will make it harder to ignore or to become accustomed to. So hearing aids can help our, our um, clients because they can, to some degree, mask the tinnitus, they reduce the contrast, they alter the production of the tinnitus peripherally by providing stimulation to the cochlea, but even more important, they alter the reaction in the brain by providing stimulation to those auditory nerves in our auditory cortex that are not receiving stimulation because of the hearing loss. We can create a structured pattern. We can reduce fatigue and stress when a person wears a hearing aid. And fatigue and stress, as we'll talk about next, can have a major impact on tinnitus. And we believe, and the research has shown, is that hearing aids can be useful in facilitating habituation. On the screen here, and I don't want to get into this to any de great detail, but are some things you want to think about when fitting hearing aids. And we're going to talk about um, some of the selection of hearing aids later as one of our later steps. But there are a number of issues that um, you can talk with your WIDEX representatives to be thinking about in terms of certain aspects of your programming of the hearing aids when you're dealing with people who have tinnitus.